child of God, did you know it is the will of God for you to win in life? Did you know that there's a substance that heaven has given every human being or at least access to it by every human being that can cause them to live an overcoming life? Did you know nothing is impossible to them that believe? Yep, there it is right there. It is the substance of faith. And every human being has access to it. God says that he's dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, welcome into the studio today because the time you and I spend around the word of the living God is absolutely destined by God to change our lives forever. Faith is the great equalizer, and God is no respecter of persons. And whatever's facing you today, you have authority over it. You can move that mountain. You can bind that situation that's got a hold of you and break free from it. And God has given you and me the substance of victory. 1 John 5, 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. That means we have faith, it's born of God, and according to the heaven of the heavens and the word of the living God, that is the substance that grants you and I the victory. You know, James writes in James chapter 1, that, and he was the brother of the Lord. You know, I think that his brothers, Jude and James, half-brothers of Jesus, they shared the same mother but certainly didn't share the same father. Jesus being virgin-born, the DNA of our Father God being in his bosom. And it took them a while to come around and watch his ministry. But after the resurrection, not only did those brothers get turned on, but they became preachers of the gospel with their half-brother, the Lord Jesus. And James and Jude write about contending for the faith. Jude says, we must contend for the faith that's been delivered to the saints. And James says that when we ask of God, who is the giving God who gives, and every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, in whom there is no changing, he says, but ask in faith, nothing wavering. Don't let the man that wavers even think he'll receive anything from the Lord. Maybe you've been asking, maybe you've been praying, but I want you to know that it's not prayer that makes faith work. It's faith that makes prayer work. I'm assigned in these broadcasts to minister to you about how to receive from heaven, how to get manifested what belongs to you that he has promised. And it's based upon this great blood-bought covenant that God has made with mankind. So welcome today. We're going to talk about the substance of faith, and you're hearing it today. Your life is never going to be the same. Now take just a minute. I know I'm taking a little extra time in the broadcast, but if you need to, I promise you, it's so life-changing. Call your family in, set them down, tape this program, watch it again, go online to TracyHarris.tv and, and bring it up, whatever you have to do, and then make a phone call and tell a friend that I'm telling you I have a law, a substance, a revelation that's being imparted to my heart. It's changed my life, and God's no respecter of persons. He'll change your life too. Miracles are still happening today, friend, and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, now let's get to this thing. If you happen to have your Bible, and we'll bring these things up on the screen, but I want to talk about something recently that the Lord actually talked to me about and talked to me about sharing with you, and it's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, and it's a great story that many of you, if you were in Sunday school or grew up in church, you've heard this story. Possibly you've read this story. But Matthew 14 says this. It says that Jesus had finished feeding the multitude. And when he did, he put them in a ship. And when he constrained them to get into that ship, they went before him to the other side and he sent the multitudes away. That's Matthew 14, 22. Then it says, Jesus... When he had sent the multitudes away, went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Now I want to talk to you about God is giving you a command. He's telling you it's his promise. He's telling you it's his will for you to go to the other side of this obstacle. And what we're going to find is they faced opposition 
And this opposition was not only the natural elements, but as you read the story, Jesus winds up casting the devil out of a man in the country on the other side. So this storm that was arising against them had a demonic spiritual origin to it, but it's also a natural thing that would induce their senses to fear. And here they are in their own strength, doing everything they can to make headway and are making no headway in the darkness of night with no modern equipment with lights. And you know what was beginning to close in and grip on them. It looked like there's no possible way we're going to make it through this situation. And here Jesus comes and it says the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves for the wind was contrary. But in the fourth watch of the night, sometime between three and six in the morning, Jesus went up unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. And they said, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, come bid me. Tell me to come to you, walk to you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But now listen to these key words. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now, we understand the response. And if you've ever heard this story, you've heard the response. But here it says that when he said, Lord, save me, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said to him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. John's gospel says that the moment they got in the ship, it immediately went to the other shore. Which means not only did the natural elements subside, but the demon forces that were causing that storm, they were bound, they broke through, and now they're not accelerating or moving in their own strength. Something gets released that translates, causes a miracle, suspends natural law, and puts them into where Jesus told them to go. Now, it's really important that we understand what's going on here. You know, the Lord asked me a, uh, a question recently. I was in a meeting. I happened to be in a meeting with a bunch of ministers. I wasn't the one speaking. I had spoken in that meeting a night or two before. And I'm listening to someone else share, and they're actually, uh, actually ordaining other ministers. It's an ordination service. And the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he asked me this, because this subject was brought up, and the walking on the water was brought up, and the miracle ministry of Jesus was brought up to these preachers. When it was brought up, I heard down in here, the Holy Spirit just whispered to my spirit, what was it that Peter walked on? Well, you know, I preached this a lot of times over the years. I've uh, ministered it in many different ways for different reasons and purposes and direction. But uh, I always know when the Lord asks me a question, I obviously don't know the answer or he wouldn't be asking the question. If you had asked me that the hundred times before when I preached it or the thousand times before when I preached it, I would have told you, well, he certainly wasn't walking on the water. I mean, he was. In actual fact, they saw that and he began to sink in the water when he got distracted. But clearly it wasn't the water holding him up. And I used to say, and I would say quite obviously, honestly, I would say, he was walking on the word. When Jesus said, come, Jesus stepped out of the boat, and he stepped on the C, and the next step was on the O, and the next step was on the M, and the next step was on the E. And so I just said, well, Lord, I've always said that he must have been walking on the word, that the word's what held him up. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, what did I say to him? And suddenly I knew what Jesus was saying to me. He said, when Peter began to sink, he said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The moment that the Lord said that to me, it's just like suddenly my eyes were open and I saw it. Yes, the word was what he was walking on. No doubt about that because this world's hung upon the word. It's created by the word. But how did that word, what substance was it that caused the word to create the world? And suddenly it came alive in me, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And just gently, the Lord Jesus, by his spirit, whispered into my spirit, Peter was walking on the substance of faith. 
And the reason God wanted to tell me that is because he's saying to me, you have that same substance in you. Whatever it is you're facing that seems like you can't get through it, whatever it is that's screaming, you're not going to make it this time, you're going to sink, it's not going to work. He's saying you have something in you that's greater than everything and even the natural law that's on the outside of you, and what's in you is going to put you over past the obstacle, past the situation. It's going to storm, still the storm. It's going to move the limits, and it's going to put you into the destination. That is the physical, tangible. I can touch it. I can see it. I can hear it. I feel it. God's Word manifesting, becoming reality in my life and in your life. When I saw this, I saw that here it is. Now, I understand that not everybody has a red letter edition of the Scripture, but when you see this in the Scripture and it's appearing in red, that means Jesus said it. That means Jesus identified Peter's problem. What was it that caused him to sink? Jesus said it in a phrase. He said, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, there's a couple of things I want to say about this. Jesus clearly is saying that the lack of faith is what caused him to sink. Now, I know that sometimes that's hard to swallow from some folks because they say, well, this didn't turn out. That didn't turn out. I, I, I believed God with everything I knew how to do, and it didn't turn out. Listen, the problem here is not that he didn't have faith. Clearly, he had some faith because it says, oh, you of little faith. So clearly, he had some faith. He had enough faith. He had more faith than the eleven. He didn't stay in the boat. They're sitting in a dry dock boat. He clearly stepped out on the water. Wow, that's a heroic feat. And what I really want to say to you is, this is not a condemning story. If when you get a hold of what I'm going to tell you, this will absolutely cause you to rise back up on top of something you may feel you've sunk down into, and it's going to break you through the situation. We have heavenly help. There's a heavenly substance that no matter what's blowing around us, no matter what's trying to stop us from getting there, no matter what is sucking us down into it, it doesn't have more authority than the faith that's on the inside of us. We have a substance that will stop the wind, stop the waves, stop gravity, stop Stop the, prog stop the limits and push us to the other side. And God is no respecter of persons. That faith is in you right now. And that's the faith I want to talk to you about. I don't really want to talk about the littleness of Peter's faith. I really want to talk about the substance that he did have. Did you know that even a little faith in Peter's heart gave him the ability to tackle an ocean? The problem is he didn't stay focused on the substance he had that put him over all the natural laws. That was the spiritual law set in motion that would dominate demon powers, dominate the circumstances around him, and as we know from the Word of God, dominate the law of sin and death and the curse. You know, there's three levels of laws. There are spiritual laws, which is the highest level of laws there are. Then there is natural law. Actually, that, that like the law of gravity in the earth and everybody's subject to it that are in a physical body. And then there's civil law, the magistrates that put out a speed limit or so forth. The highest level of law there is is spiritual law. Spiritual law, when set in motion and kept in motion, will always supersede, have authority and effect over civil law and natural law. Now, I know what you're thinking. God says, honor those to whom honor is due. There's a grace that's attached with obeying the authorities and so forth. I'm not talking about just doing what you want to do and not paying your taxes and speeding at will and saying, well, God gave me grace. That is presumption. That's not the scripture. But we see what I'm talking about in the book of Acts. When the authorities, the religious authorities came to them and it was religious law or civil law that was put upon the, the apostles and said, don't teach, don't preach anymore in this name. You know what they did, don't you? They got beaten. They got even jailed. But they said, whether or not it's right to obey God or men, you decide what's right. Now, this is what I'm talking about. When Satan tries to use natural law or civil law to say it's not happening for you, when the creator of all of the universe and all of those laws told you to go to the other side, 
then the storm doesn't have authority. The command of going to the other side has authority. And then the gravity doesn't have authority. The command to go to the other side has authority. Then the demon powers don't have authority. They, the devil doesn't have the right to tell you whether you can do what God told you to do or not. And God told you to be healed. God told you to be prospered. God told you to be blessed. God told you to let your light shine. God said open doors of favor would come to you. God said that you are to walk in the blessing of your father Abraham. All of these things are bought and paid for by the covenant blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and no devil in hell has the right nor the authority to tell you you can't go to the other side when Jesus said you go build that thing. You go start that business. You go walk in that healing. You go preach this gospel. You go on that missions trip. You do what I told you to do. I'm telling you right now, I see it in the spirit. I see it in the spirit. I see it in the spirit. There's a woman watching me right now. You are barren and have been unable to have children. The doctors have told you you'll never have children. And you might say, well, I've been told I'll never have children. And I'll say, who told you? And you say, well, the doctor did. You know what I'm going to say? Whew, I thought somebody that had authority told you that. Glory to God. God's the only one that has the authority to give life and then, and then cause it to be. He doesn't bring something to the birth and turn it back. I'm telling you under the authority of the mighty hand of God right now in the name of Jesus, I command life to come into your womb. I command life to come into your female parts. I bind and break the power of anything you're born with or anything that's come against you. I bind endometriosis. I bind infertility. I bind anything that's spoken against you. I bind scar tissue. I bind uh, accidents and calamity and damage to organs. I bind it. I break its power. I command you to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth and subdue it. I'm telling you, you're going to watch this broadcast. You need to get online. You need to write our ministry because about this time next year, you will have a beautiful, healthy, glorious child as the promise of the living God. I'm telling you, I'm under the anointing right now in this studio. That's word of knowledge for you who are watching. Put your hand on your belly. I speak life. I speak life. I command that womb to have life. I command those ovaries to have life. I command your relationship to prosper. I command your marriage to be whole. I command the fertility in your husband to be whole. And the two of you will indeed see the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, here's what you've thought. Well, you know, maybe it's God's will for me to adopt. Let me tell you something. It absolutely probably is. Do you realize how many people are out there that when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up? God probably does need people like you that love God, full of the Holy Ghost, that are baptized in the things of God, and that are watching a program like this, will teach their children after the ways of God. He needs you to adopt. He needs you to go around the world and adopt foreign children. That's awesome. But adoption doesn't mean you can't have your own. Have both because Jesus' blood has provided for absolute breakthrough life in every area of our life. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the substance of faith will break the limits of the natural realm and anybody that's not authorized to tell you no and nothing is impossible to them that believe. Well, yeah, I'm stirred up under the anointing and so i got to get back here so that we can talk about this substance a little bit more. Now, Jesus said to Peter, he's walking on the water. He said to him, here's why you sank. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The issue wasn't that Peter didn't have faith. The issue was that he did have doubt. Now, when we look at the word of God, Abraham was given a command that was absolutely impossible. His body was old and dead. Sarah's body was old and dead. But the scripture says he became fully persuaded in faith that what God had promised, he was able to perform it. And when he was about 100 years old, he had the promised son Isaac. And today, because Abraham obeyed God, God had made a covenant between Abraham and his seed. And the scripture is very, very clear about this in Galatians 3. If we be Christ, and I belong to him, don't you? If we be Christ, then we're Abraham's seed and we are heirs according to the promise. Well, I'm just going to tell you, we're promised the same thing Abraham was promised. And Isaac came from a hopeless, impossible, dead situation. Faith is what brought Isaac into being. Faith is what gave Isaac substance. And your faith and my faith will give substance to our dreams as well. Now, I want to 
I want to, I want to deal with this here where he says, oh, you of little faith. What that means is, is the lack of faith is what caused him to begin to sink. Well, let's flip that coin over now. That means while he was walking, he was walking by faith. If he was walking by faith, then what it means is during the time he was on top of the water, it was the substance, the supernatural substance, the force of faith that physically superseded gravity. The wind had no authority over it. The waves couldn't swamp it. Here's Peter walking on top, defying every natural law because a substance is in operation that supersedes all of the natural substances around him. That means faith is the substance that Peter was walking on to conquer, to conquer what was telling him it couldn't be done and to get to Jesus or to get the will of God done to get to the other side. Hallelujah. I tell you, I got so thrilled in the middle of that teaching when the Spirit of God took hold with us and I know that that person that is believing God for that child is watching this program. I trust you're still watching this program and you do need to connect with us. A miracle happened right in the middle of that teaching. What happened? The substance of faith rose up in you while I was teaching. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You know, one of the things about these programs that I love so much is being able to spend time with you. One of the things that's bittersweet about these programs is I absolutely hate running out of time. This is an everlasting gospel and it's still working when we have to sign off the air, but we want to minister to you much greater, much more deeply than just the seed of this program that you're able to watch in the segment that it gets aired, even if it's aired more than one time during the week and around the world and you're watching it, we want to be a part of your walking in the things of God and in the victory. One way we do that is our major assignment is to teach the body of Christ how to receive, how to harvest. We have a monthly teaching letter that I want to encourage you to go on our website, treasureharris.tv. It'll link you to our full website and there'll be a banner. Put in your information and we will get this paper letter to you every month where you can get your hands on it, where you can read it, where it will build your faith. This one is called Faith Puts an End to the Curse. It'll teach you how Jesus cut the roots out of that fig tree and the curse of barrenness was broken. You can also get online and uh, get make available to yourself. This is a mini book called Faith that's out of this world. It'll teach you how faith is a substance from another world. It'll rearrange everything and cause you to walk in victory. This book is called Press Beyond Measure. You know, we talked about that a little bit today, about how that the disciples were pressed and as if they were out of their course, but God has a plan for you. Now, we've got a few seconds. We're going to be showing you something about how you can connect with the ministry, but I want to pray for you in these last few seconds right now because the woman that's getting that child, you can have a birth of your miracle today too in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over demon powers. I take authority over sickness and disease, the law of sin and death. I break its power over the lives of people. Jesus, show yourself alive to the children of God today with the substance of faith. Amen and amen. It all started here over 35 years ago. God revealed himself to me that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God of miracles today as he was in Bible days. And that was only the beginning place of Lori and I dedicating our lives to him. 35 years, 420 months, 1,825 weeks, 12,775 days, 306,600 hours, 18,410,000 minutes. What does that time equal? Five continents, 50 nations, thousands of miracles, and millions of people touched by the good news of Jesus. It is all about the people. Today, through Harvest International Ministries ministerial affiliation, the sun never sets on our voice being heard around the world. The Lord is giving us a thousand points of light, each point being another ministry gift that the Lord has partnered with us to go beyond us. The ministry of Tracy and Lori Harris and HIM 
is not about what we can get from you, but what we can get to you. The faithfulness of our partners allows people around the world to be ministered to by multifaceted platforms of reproducing revelation knowledge, such as television, internet radio, website, printed page and books, monthly partner letters, crusades, tent and church meetings, local churches, downloads, CDs, DVDs, and so much more. How can you be a part? Partner with him. Your monthly seed goes directly into the reproduction of Revelation knowledge. This whole ministry is dedicated to sending the light of the gospel of Jesus into a darkened world. Revelation knowledge is the center pole of HIM. We are believing for three heavenly grants into three areas of the ministry. One, we are currently believing for our next airplane, a Cessna Citation 650 series, so that we can go faster and further to reach more people. We must speed the seed of the gospel. Two, we are believing to reach more people through our media ministry. The Lord has instructed us to go on more television stations, to write more books, have more messages available, and to build a better website. On top of that, the Lord said to do it where anyone can come on our website and listen to a message that will change their life in their time of need as a seed. The Lord has imparted these life-changing truths into Tracy and Lori's lives for over 35 years. And with your monthly partnership seed, we can send this revelation knowledge to people all around the world at no charge. Anyone with an internet connection can download these programs or messages and have their life completely changed. Three, we now own 70 acres of land across the street from our current ministry headquarters. The Lord has instructed us to build a place for Him to be able to touch other people. That will come through a partner center, a Bible school, a worship center, and many, many more buildings. God wants to touch people, and they want to touch Him. You can be a part of building a complex where the sun will never set on His ministry to people. The question is not will these things happen, the question is will you be a part? Will you stretch forth your hand to help a hurting humanity? Will you help speed the seed of the gospel around the world? Partner with him. Thank you for watching Experience Him. If this message has ministered to you and you would like more information or to contact Harvest International Ministries, write to us at the address on the screen or please visit us online at tracyharris.tv. Join us as we go from vision to victory by helping this generation reach its destiny through teaching, preaching, and healing the nations.